Is ZP negative? What's that really asking? They want to know whether Z and P are on opposite sides of zero on the number line. After all, those are the circumstances under which the product Z times P will be negative. So I think it's really important that we rephrase the question like that, right? Our, our Z and P, if we draw a number line and put zero in the middle, are Z and P on opposite sides of zero on that number line, or are they both on the same side of zero on the number line? So let's evaluate the statements right after the intro. So I think I actually want to start with statement two because addition and an equation both seem easier to evaluate than a product and an inequality. So starting with statement two, Okay, we know that the sum of p and z to the power of 4 is 14. We can also say that z to the power of 4 is at least 0 because there's an even exponent on top there. So regardless of which side of 0 z came from, once you multiply z times itself an even number of times, that's never going to be negative because the negative signs would just cancel each other out. So z to the power of 4 is not negative. It's at least zero. And when you add p to it, you get 14. Does that tell us which side of zero p is? Does it tell us which side of zero z is? Does it tell us that they're on opposite sides of zero or could they still be on the same side of zero? The answer is I have no idea where either p or z is relative to zero or relative to each other from this equation. And so I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the answer choices that claim that statement 2 is sufficient on its own. So B and D are gone, and we're down to A, C, E. Now statement 1 tells us that P and Z to the power of 4, those are uh, on opposite sides of 0, their product is negative. Okay, so that's great, but we wanted to know whether P and Z are on opposite sides of 0. So does knowing anything about which side of zero z to the power of four is allow us to infer which side of zero z is? And the answer is no. In fact, we could already say that z to the power of four won't be to the left of zero. But which side of zero is z on, I have no idea. Uh, we could infer here that p is to the left of zero. p has to be negative because z to the power of four can't be negative, and their product is negative, so p must be negative, but then on which side of zero is z, I have no idea, so even this statement on its own is not sufficient, and we can go ahead and eliminate a. So now finally we are allowed to combine these statements, and the question is, now that we know that p is definitely negative, and we know really nothing about z, but we do know that z to the power of 4 is not negative, that we knew anyway, now we also know that this negative value of p, once you add z to the power of 4 to it, you get 14. So what does that tell me? It, it tells me that z to the power of 4 is 14 units farther to the right of 0 than p is to the left of 0. Let me rephrase that. Whatever distance p is located to the left of 0, and we do know that it's to the left of 0 thanks to statement 1, z to the fourth power has to be even farther from 0, 14 units farther from 0 than p was, but on the right hand side of 0. Great, but where's z? I have no idea. So are p and z on opposite sides of 0? I have no idea. The correct answer is e. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.